So next, we have Dr. Noel Hasagaba, the Def Deputy Executive Director of the Port of Long Beach, who will talk about the Port at Outlook. He was with us all day yesterday. Today, he's with us virtually. Dr. Hasagaba. Good morning, Good morning, everyone. everyone. Uh, what, what a summit, summit it's been so far. far. Congratulations, Nick, Nick and the team for assembling another exceptional summit, summit brought to you, to you by the Kendrick Global Supply Chain, Chain Institute. Institute. It's, it's an exciting time to be in supply chain. chain. And this, this summit and this institute have become influential forces thanks to Nick, his team, and the board. And, and speaking, speaking of the board, I'm happy and honored, honored to serve alongside Carl, Jane, and Stephanie, and the rest of our colleagues on the institute board. At this time last year, Many, Many of us thought, thought we would all be back in our offices. We would all be meeting, meeting in person for the summit. And our, and our return to the new normal is happening, happening but not, not at the pace we would hope. I think, I think you could say, say the same about the supply chain. chain. We're, we're still, still moving, moving record, record volumes, but not, not as fast, as, as efficiently, or as, as reliably as we used to. This, this is why forms like these are more important. It takes the entire supply chain to come together to identify near-term solutions and to address, address legacy, legacy issues, issues to get to as, as the summit aspires like your like next With that in mind, let me set the stage for this year's Port Outlook on the next, on the next slide. In normal times, the supply chain is invisible. No one sees it and no one really thinks about it. But the pandemic-induced disruption and the backlogs that it has triggered across the global supply chain has made this invisible supply chain very visible, as you will see on the next slide. Today, the supply chain is front page news and consumers are being encouraged to buy their Christmas presents early, as you can see on the next slide. Next slide, please. Supply chain bottlenecks are the reason store shelves look bare like this image on the screen and delivery of household goods is delayed for up to six months or longer. Next slide, please. And auto dealership lots are half empty. Prices are on the rise. Next slide, please. And all of this has got the attention of the press and now is very much in the line of sight of government leaders at the highest level. When's the last time you heard the President of the United States mention ports and supply chains so frequently? This speaks to the significance of our supply chain issues and the urgency to resolve them. The connection between supply chain, the economy, and consumers has never been clearer or more understood. And all eyes are in Southern California, where 40% of the nation's cargo enters the country. And as a nation's gateway, there's a lot riding on how quickly we can clear the backlog and get the supply chain back in motion again. This is what makes this year's Global Supply Chain Excellence Summit even more important. Now that all of the attention is on us, this is an incredible opportunity to educate, advocate, and innovate. With the engagement of the administration, and the cooperation, of all segments of the supply chain, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to reimagine and reinvent the supply chain. We can't let this crisis become a missed opportunity to transform our aging transportation freight network and make it more resilient. All eyes are on the infrastructure bill. This is an incredibly important, and we support passage of a bold and robust infrastructure. Bill. But infrastructure investments are just one way to solve our supply chain challenges. We also need policy. Next slide, please. We are long overdue to have a national freight policy. The FAST Act in 2015 was a good first step, and we need to build on that. If we're serious about competing with other nations, we need a holistic, comprehensive, and innovative freight policy. In my view, this is the only way we will be able to fully maximize the historic infrastructure investments that are imminent. In addition to infrastructure investments and the freight policy to maximize it, we also need to reimagine the supply chain. I believe we have the tools, the technology, and even the talent. With all eyes on the supply chain, I would like to think we also have the will. And it's the only way we're gonna clear the backlog and demonstrate to the world that we are ready for more growth. So speaking of growth, let me show you our cargo volumes and the historic uh, wild ride we've been on. On the next slide. At this time last year, you heard me say that we were on track to set a new record. 
Well, we did. In calendar year 2020, our marine terminal operators and longshore workers in Long Beach processed 8.11 million TEU. When you consider how slow the first quarter was that year, you will better appreciate how huge the cargo surge was that began in Q3. The extraordinary growth in the third and fourth quarters catapulted us to our best run record. But that record isn't going to last very long. Let me show you our cargo volumes for 2021 on the next slide. Between January and August, our cargo volumes in Long Beach grew nearly 30% year over year. In fact, in 13 of the last 14 months, we set a new record for that month. And based on our latest projections, we expect to move 9.6 million TEU in Long Beach, shattering last year's record. And for the San Pedro Bay, the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach combined, we are on track to handle 20 million TEU, representing a 17% year-over-year increase over last year's record setting year. As much as we welcome all this new business and celebrate these records, there are other records that we are not as proud of. Case in point, vessels at anchor. And you will see this on the next slide. Some of you have probably seen the image of lines of ships waiting at anchor. In fact, the slide that you're seeing now is two days old. But as of this morning, uh, there were 68 container vessels at anchor. That's down from a peak of 73 just a few weeks ago, but we really need to get that number down, way down. It's easy to look at the vessels lined up outside the ports and call this a port congestion problem. While the backups are clearly visible at the ports, it's important to know that these are just the symptoms, and there are more. Let me show you a few more metrics on the next slide. Rail dwell is a metric we use to track the average number of days and an intermodal box sits in the marine terminal. As you can see on the latest report published by PMSA, this is down to 5.5 days after peaking at 12.4 days in April. This improvement reflects the work the Class 1 railroads have been doing to unclog the bottlenecks at some of the nation's key inland rail points. Another metric we track is container dwell time. There are some positive news on the rail side, but as you can see on this slide, uh, on this next slide, Container dwell time measures the average number of days a container sits on the terminal once discharged. And based on the latest reports, this is actually up to six days, the highest it's been since September 2020, and more than double what it was normally uh, during the pandemic. In fact, almost a third of all containers in LA Long Beach sit in the terminal yard longer than five days. I think you would all agree that this is unacceptable, and it's the reason you see containers piling up at the terminals and as many as 73 ships at anchor waiting for their turn to come aboard. So why are these containers piling up and the ships hanging out at anchor? Well, the next slide tells us one major reason. The 2 billion square feet of warehouse and distribution center space that supports our port complex is fully subscribed and facing significant labor shortage. With no place to go, containers are spending more time at the port and chassis, another important piece of equipment like vessels at anchor, are parked along the perimeter of warehouses serving as makeshift warehouses. Now, this takes critically needed chassis out of circulation, further impacting the ability to deliver empties and pick up imports at the port. In fact, let me show you the current impact on chassis fluidity as measured by the Pool of Pool, which manages the largest segment of the chassis market on the next slide. The chassis leasing companies are doing everything they can to drive fluidity on their chassis but the magnitude of the cargo surge combined with the shortage of warehouse space is too much of a steep climb. We can't fix our, our out of service for manufacturing new chassis fast enough. And the 40% duty on Chinese made chassis is further impacting supply. The only way we're gonna be able to process record volume using the same footprint is by driving velocity and fluidity. We need those chassis that are parked around the warehouses to be moving containers. We need those trains moving. We need those boxes piled up in the terminals to be picked up. And we need those to bring those ships at anchor to berth for immediate discharge. So here's a question. How do we do that? We need to inject capacity into the system as quickly as possible. Let me show you what we're doing in Long Beach with the collaboration of our customers, industry partners, longshore workers, and the state and federal government on the next slide. Thanks to the support of our Board of Harbor Commission, in the fall of 2020, we activated 17 acres of vacant land on Pure S, 
to open what we call the short-term overflow, overflow resource operation, or we call it simply Tier Store. As soon as we opened this site, started providing immediate relief to our terminal. And since that time, we've grown this site to 65 acres and every square inch is used up. This site has a throughput capacity equivalent to more than 500,000 TEU per year. And believe it or not, still not enough. And by the way, we were able to open up this site immediately thanks to the governor's executive order, which by the way, was amplified just moments ago when uh, the governor announced some key initiatives that his administration uh, is advancing to help with supply chain issues. So we want to thank the governor and his administration for their support as well. Another way we added capacity was by completing the final phase of our Long Beach container terminal, as you will see on the next slide. Phase three of this project introduced 1 million TEU in throughput capacity, bringing the entirety of this terminal to have a throughput capacity of 3.5 million TEU per year. Now, this project was part of a $4 billion CapEx program, the most aggressive of any port in North America. Thanks to the bold leadership of our board, uh, these are the types of investments that will make us competitive, not just today, but in the years ahead. This program also delivered our new bridge, as you will see on the next slide, soon to be named the Long Beach International Gateway, or as we like to call it informally, the Bridge to Everywhere. If you ever get a chance to see this bridge, it's quite a sight, especially at night when it's lit up. I'm trying to get our team, trying to convince our team to come up with a cardinal and gold color scheme and the Trojan marching band playing in the background on loudspeakers. And by the way, we're not done building. Over the next 10 years, we're planning to invest another, another 1.7 billion to improve our infrastructure. And you'll see the centerpiece of this investment program on the next slide. With the cargo volumes we're seeing today and the volumes we expect to see in the years ahead, we need to dramatically upgrade our rail our Pier Beyond Dock Rail Support Facility will increase our rail capacity threefold and enable our terminals to move a higher percentage of intermodal boxes directly from the terminal. To maximize these infrastructure investments, we're also looking for ways to optimize operations at the port. And the next slide will summarize some of these activities. We have evolved from the traditional landlord port model and are actively involved and engaged with our terminals and industry partners to make sure that we are optimizing our port. I want to show you a few ways we're doing this on the next few slides. Next slide, please. When the pandemic first hit, we were surprised by how many of our shippers and industry partners were in the dark, literally, about the influx of blank sailings. So we developed a weekly report that we call the WAVE report, which stands for Weekly Advanced Volume Estimate. This pushes out information on projected volumes and vessel calls. Our terminals have also stepped up in the data sharing space. On the next slide, you'll see how Long Beach Container Terminal is leveraging APIs or application programming interfaces to manage their appointments. APIs integrate the terminal's operating system to the truck management system of the trucking community to enable the automatic creation, cancellation, and grouping of truck appointments. ITS, another one of our terminals, is also leveraging emerging technologies, as you'll see on the next slide. Leveraging predictive analytics, ITS is allowing shippers to book truck appointments up to five days before the vessel arrives to berth. As a port authority, we're also leveraging technology to help make operations in our complex a little more efficient. You'll see this on the next slide. Earlier this summer, we launched our truck alert program, which sends SMS text messages in real time to motor carriers that enter our port. And the idea here is to give them a heads up about any traffic decours, backups, and general traffic conditions so they can plan their drive accordingly. And in turn, this is helping us better manage traffic flow within our complex. Our terminal operators are also stepping up and answering the president's call, as you will see on the next slide. Our terminals in Long Beach are maximizing gate hours. They're flexing morning and evening gates. They're opening Friday night and weekend gates. And they're working with specific shippers to consolidate boxes for rapid evacuation from the terminal. And we continue to work very closely with the trucking community to make sure that our expanded gates are more widely accessible to more motor carriers. In addition, uh, one of our terminals, TTI, launched a pilot program a few weeks ago that uses the hoot shift to make their operation available 24 hours a day, Monday through Thursday, as you will see on the next slide. 
we view this pilot program as a first step towards a 24-7 operation. This brings me to the next slide. As a result of the president's announcement last week, there's been a lot of talk about 24-7 operations and how fast we can actually get there. I'm hopeful the president's announcement and the administration's engagement will align the supply chain around this vision. This will not happen overnight, and it will take coordination across the supply chain to make it happen. As I like to say, there is no single switch that can turn the supply chain on 24-7, but we are activating a series of switches to eventually get us there. And yes, it will require everyone in the supply chain to step up. We applaud and thank the administration for the leadership and engagement. Uh, Port Envoy, uh, Envoy John Picari, Special Assistant to President Liz Reynolds, Transportation Secretary Buttigieg, the NEC and the entire administration have been working alongside the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach to help bring immediate relief and start putting long-term solutions in motion now. But also like to thank the state, the governor's office, GoBiz, CalSTA, and all the state agencies that are working with us uh, to try to resolve these issues in the near term, but also for the long term as well. You see, this is a level of collaboration that is required to help bring those 68 vessels and anchor to birth and bring fluidity and velocity back to the supply chain. As long as we continue to work together, we can recover from this as early as summer of 2022, or perhaps sooner. Well, this concludes my formal presentation. Happy to take any questions at this time.